Science of the Mind Research on the brain proves that thoughts stimulate chemistry, that stimulates emotions, that in turn stimulates behavior. Take whatever time you may need to study this information. Let's move into the specifics of waging war against lust and pornography. Let's come back to Galatians 5.17. Remember the word says that the flesh is at war with the spirit? And they're in bitter opposition. So what does the flesh mean? Because you're at war with the flesh, it would be good to know your enemy and what the meaning of the flesh is. The Greek word for flesh is sarx, and it has several meanings. In some verses, the flesh simply means the body, but the flesh also stands for the sinful nature, the carnal mind, the sensual cravings, and the animal instincts. It's so important that you know what the flesh is. Listen to this, Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The Greek word for mind is phronema. It's used only four times in the New Testament. It's a specific kind of thinking, and it can do no other. Be it flesh, which is worldly thinking, or spiritual thinking, which is truth. The mind of the flesh doesn't obey the Word of God, and it's not capable of obeying it. The mind of the Spirit only thinks love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the reason that the mind of the flesh and the mind of the Spirit are in opposition to each other. They're entrenched in bitter warfare. Romans 8, 6, and 7 says, For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind of the flesh is hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So the flesh has a mind, which only does a specific kind of thinking, a thinking that is hostile towards God. There's no cure for the flesh. Let me say it again. There is no cure for the flesh, only a ferocious determination to overcome and have victory over the mind of the flesh. And that's your decision. In order to make that decision, it's extremely important that you know what the mind of the flesh is. What you're looking at is a picture of the human brain with a hundred billion neurons conducting amazing electrical chemical processing. Now, there are specific areas of your brain that store and retrieve information coming in from our five senses, which allow us to respond to the issues of life. The Word tells us that the flesh has a mind. Let me show you where I believe the mind of the flesh is located. The part of the brain that you're seeing here is called the limbic system. It's known as the emotional brain. The higher reasoning part of the brain is located here, and fleshly-minded processing and thinking is here. This is where the instinctual drives and behaviors come from. This part of the brain controls the automatic ways we respond to our environment and relationships. We learn to fight or flee, to do anger, rage, anxiety, fear, and addictions. We have also learned inappropriate ways to satisfy our sexual desires, which are automatically stimulated and controlled by this part of our brain. So the flesh has a mind that puts chemicals into your brain that hijacks you and shuts your higher reasoning down. So remember, the mind of the flesh doesn't obey the Word of God and it's not capable of obeying it. We're going to teach you how to be the objective observer over the mind of the flesh, thoughts and emotions that get stimulated by the lies that saturate the world. So the flesh has a mind. It's the reptilian part of your brain. It says in 2 Corinthians 10.5, but you're supposed to take thoughts captive. What does it mean to take captive? I've heard it said many times that to take captive means to put your thoughts in prison, hold them still, lasso them, ignore them, control them. Now, control your thoughts is closer. A hikamalitso is the Greek word that is used in this verse for to take captive. A hikamalitso means to lead. You're to lead your thoughts to truth. Remember, we said cooperating with God for a change. God's mind armor 
is training your brain. This is about you learning how to take thoughts captive, to train your brain how, to destroy strongholds, because you can.